Here are the guys that Randor relies on. Here's your look at the Mattel Massey Universe Origins, Eternian Palace Guard Royal Defender. As the first line of defense, the Eternian Palace Guards protect King Randor and Queen Marlena from outside threats. Well, at least Man at Arms has men of many. Before, of course, we get a close look at the Master Universe Origins Eternian Palace Guard, let's grab the tape measure and see how tall this stands. This figure is going to be quite old. It was released first in 2021. I was a little behind in actually picking up this set. The nudge that I needed, so to speak, was actually the fact that we got this mold again get released in the Snake Men Infiltrator, part of the current wave of figures that we've been looking at lately here on this channel. So, of course, twist my rubber arm, I decided to finally pick up the set, and I was lucky enough to find the set at a pretty decent price. The Eternian Guard, though, stands about five and a half inches in height, or the figure's going to be about 14 centimeters tall. And speaking of Man-at-Arms, let's bring in Man-at-Arms right now. This was the original Man-at-Arms. The benefit of actually getting also the Eternian Palace Guard set is the fact it also comes included with an unmasked, mustached Man-at-Arms. If you wanted to have a more closer resembling the vintage Man-at-Arms, we're going to be looking at that head sculpt more in a second. I also as well did want to bring in the Man-at-Arms we've just recently had a look at. This, I think, is the Serpent Claw. Uh, man at arms nice looking figure again it's just basically using the mold as this one before but again slightly tooling a different armor piece on the front and darkening the colors a whole lot and of course if this is going to be part of the massive universe line it always be best to bring in the original one the most powerful man in the universe here's what the eternian palace guard looks like with he-man Jumping now over to the figure's accessories, the guard comes included with two things that I think were originally from the Castle Grayskull playset, being the fact it has the spear with the blade on the end of it. I think Scareglow, if memory serves me correctly, had something very similar to this as well. And it also comes included with the shield. Both are cast more of in a silver plastic. It doesn't look like there's any additional paint applications that's been afforded to either one of these, but at least with the benefit of the shield sliding on the way that it does. Uh, he only has one really gripping hand that's going to be, of course, holding this one. But of course, with the shield, you can take the shield and then slide it conveniently on the hand of the palace guard just basically doing it like that the problem with it though first of all is the fact that he does have the the forearm guard that's going to kind of get in the way of things when it's him trying to hold the shield but still it holds it well enough and of course then from there you can also go ahead and take yourself the spear and that plugs onto the end of it being the fact there is by the way on the end of it a blade i don't know if it's actually just called and referred to as a spear i'm sure it's been giving more of a war name to it just drawing a blank, bit of a blank at the moment the figure though comes also included with things if for example you wanted to have more displayed like man at arms being the fact that the figure comes first of all as well with the additional armor piece this is basically not that different really i'm going to bring back in the man at arms that we already had before it's the exact same armor piece it's not differently tooled at all unlike the serpent for example serpent claw man at arms it's the exact same armor Maybe I would say it's just a tad bit lighter if you look at the two colors. This one has more of a slightly darker color of orange, but other than that, the mold is exactly the same. The other thing that's also the same is the fact he comes included with the same mace as from before. But again, the coloring of the plastic, you can see, is just a tad bit lighter. The last thing also coming included with the palace guard is the fact the figure comes also included with the unmasked mustached. Why am I having a hard time to get that out? The unmasked mustached version of Man at Arms. So if you wanted to have it more closely resembling the way the original vintage toy would have had it, because the first time we got Man at Arms didn't have a mustache, you have this alternate head sculpt as well. It seems to be exactly the same other than the fact that, of course, the newer one that we got from the Origins line did sport a mustache closer to the Filmation cartoon. But if you like to go back to the basics, this definitely fits it better, a little bit better because it looks like the original vintage toy. By the way, though, being the fact that they are using the same ball joints after all, it's very easy, in fact. I say very easy, in fact, to pop the head off the ball joint for Man at Arms and then replace it with this alternate head sculpt, which again will just plug in place. And you can have the figure displayed then again with his original classic look. Not really sure, honestly, which way I'm going to go. I mean, in one way, I would really like to have these toys, these figures, look like the original 80s toys. But I kind of always really like the idea that Man at Arms had more of a mustache. Again, this same look, by the way, can easily be replicated on this figure. It's just going to revolve uh, removing some of the armor pieces. Uh, of course, before we do that, though, I did want to first of all take the, uh, the spear out of his hand. We'll go ahead and take and remove the shield. I'm getting a closer look at the palace guard. One of the problems, of course, with the original Man at Arms carries now over twice is that he has all these extra armor pieces that are very prone to sliding around. You can do your best to kind of belt them in place. 
but with not having extra afforded clips on the inside. You only get one of them. Once it gets past that point, it's not like you can tighten them any further. But these are always ones that are always known for falling and slipping around. And again, he has it on both sides. This one side, in fact, I'm always finding myself trying to correct it. Head sculpt wise, it's very similar in fact to Man at Arms. Again, bringing back in though, you can see like the helmets are very identical to one another. The only thing that's different though is the fact that this one does have a mouth plate. The neat thing though about the mouth plate is if we pry this, it might even be easier to pry it down. If we were to pry it down, you can actually see that they've sculpted a face underneath it. It wasn't just a case that if you were looked underneath the mouth guard, you just see a completely missing mouth. There is actually a sculpted and I'm guessing they just likely retooled the Man at Arms face and just included the mouth guard in front of it. But it's a nice looking for what it is head sculpt. It happens to have the same hair as well for Man at Arms. So apparently that's a requirement. If you want to be, for example, an Eternian guard for King Randor, you'll apparently always have to have black hair. Speaking though of black hair, actually that's not really what I was going to be speaking of. Speaking of hair, uh, I would love to have gotten this guy released in a two pack. I don't know how that has anything really to do with hair. Maybe, oh, I know. The reasoning why I want to say had something to do with the hair is maybe they could have also changed the coloring of the hair if this was released as a two-pack. I think, honestly, getting a single figure is fine, but getting this as a two-pack, I think, would have made a lot more sense. I would have not minded paying at all the extra cost involved to get two of these guys instead of just the one. That's why I was talking about the hair, because the other hair could have maybe been blonde. It could have been brown. I don't know. Not that it really matters. The body of the build here is exactly the same as well for Man at Arms. So if you were to say, look at the two, the only thing that's really different is you can see like this one has a little circular red piece in the middle that's been painted. The original Man at Arms would not have had that. The loincloths though are the same. You can see as well, the, boot, the belts are exactly the same blue coloring. And again, like the molding of the bodies are exactly the same green. Again, looking at it too, it does look like the armor is just a slight bit lighter here with the Eternian guards, but really not by much. You can kind of see that a lot more when you see the shoulder pads. Shoulder pads seem to be the same. The forearm guards, again, are the same. Just the colors of the, are a little bit brighter. Part of me is almost even tempted to start sw swapping things around. Now, of course, with this one, he does have a different armor piece, for example. So the whole front chest armor does have the additional eagle crest there's on the front very much kind of replicating battle armor he-man of course this would not actually flip around if you were to hit it but you can though if you wanted to you could take the armor off uh, first of all if you wanted to that's just i keep saying if you wanted to if you wanted to you could take the armor off and just slide it off the sides of his forearms so right away that's already closer to being looking like duncan then from there all you're going to do is look to the back now this normally would have been attached like this but these things never stay properly in place then you're going to go ahead and grab these and you're just going to detach them from the top now, really, really what we're doing is we're just ma basically making this look a lot more like Man-at-Arms. You know what we'll do? I'll just slide these all off because I know they're only going to get in the way of things. Take those all off. We're going to also just attach the straps on, on both the backs. There we go. And then we're just going to entirely remove the whole front chest piece. That's all we're needing to do. And again, from there, we're also going to go ahead and take the head. We're going to pop that off also off as well. And we're going to place it with the unmustached. Now, it doesn't even really have to be man at arms either. Just want to make sure I've got that all the way on there. It doesn't even have to really be man at arms. It could also just be some random guy that decides he doesn't want to have a mouth plate and he just happens to look very much resembling man at arms. Now from there, of course, we're also going to go ahead and take the chest piece and this armor, you're just going to attach the side. Let me just put the figure down here for a second. These sometimes are a little harder to detach. I don't know why really. I'm basically just reversing the steps instead of actually Instead of putting them on, I'm just essentially taking it off. But we're going to take the back piece. Why is this all getting hung up here? Oh, I know why. This this got stuck in the back here. So once that's detached, I think we're all good to go. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to fit this around the body and the frame of the Eternian Guard. And really by now, he's less looking like the Guard. And he's looking a lot more like Man-at-Arms. And then from there, we're going to slide these pieces in place. I won't completely detach them because ultimately I think I'm still going to display this as as much work as I put into this. I'm still going to be displaying this as the attorney and guard. But I did want to at least get somewhat in there so I could actually show you guys what this would look like. Again, if you wanted to have this looking a little bit more like the original Man at Arms. I guess this also would be a good idea too if you guys, for example, didn't get the chance to get the original Man at Arms and maybe the price point on this guy was getting a little higher. If you could find, for example, the Eternian Guard for a lot less of a price, it probably would make a little bit more sense to get, to get this set. And then you could just get yourself a Man at Arms by just doing all the steps I'm currently doing right now. I'm going to slide on that piece. I'm going to slide on the forearm. Just around his hand. And there we go. With all the work that was put into that, the only other thing really I have to do is remove the leg piece, but just short of that, <clears throat> short of that, 
you get yourself basically the same man at arms. Just the only difference between the two is one is sporting a mustache, one is not. I mean, again, it's a good looking set. I honestly still feel like the set should have been sold as a set, a set of two. So that way you could get yourself, for example, one displayed as man at arms, or for example, if you wanted to, you could mix and match these two. Nothing's really necessarily saying that you have to have them looking exactly the same. If you want to have, for example, this attorney and guard having two shoulder pads, you can easily do that also as well. The articulation on this guy is, I'm just going to slide this off first of all, the articulation on the attorney and guard is going to be exactly the same as the one before. I don't know why the head is as loose as it is. It doesn't seem like it wants to sit properly on the ball joint, but the head does rotate all the way around as loose as it may be. It looks down, looks up, and also looks back and forth as well. All the same articulation still at play here. Shoulder hinges at 90 degrees. You can take the arms and rotate them all the way around. Here's a bend at the elbow, a rotation in the forearm, a rotation as well in the hand. The waist swivels. Legs split out once again on ball joints. You can take the legs and move them forward, move them back. Single hinge only in the knee, but it allows at least the lower leg to rotate. And again, back and forth on the ankles and back and forth this way as well. For all the work that we did put into this, essentially I will still be reverting him back to the way he was before. Still though, I'm kind of curious as to whether maybe I, I might find myself dismantling some of the figure and putting together. And I see like, again, looking at the colors you can see between the two. Okay, maybe like I would say the original Man at Arms has slightly more brighter of a vibrancy when it comes to the orange plastic. It's a little bit more muted, I would say, on the one that we get here for the Eternian Pal Pal Palace guard. But yeah, if you wanted to, you could mix and match them, or if you really wanted to, too. I mean, considering you do have he two heads to work with, what I might just find myself doing is maybe getting a second set of these. I keep saying it's a set. It's really only just one figure and a whole bunch of accessories. But I might find myself getting a second one of these. So then I could get myself an Internian guard. And then I'll get an alternate head sculpt. Instead of actually going and trying to source out an original man at arms. Which might actually be a little bit more expensive, honestly, than getting the Eternian palace guard. I might get another one of these. And dismantle and do everything I basically did in this video. Put on, for example, the helmeted head sculpt on one that's going to look more like the guard. And basically do the other thing to what I've just done now and have one looking a little bit more like Duncan. Might just find myself doing that. That way I've got one that looks more like the filmation counterpart of Man at Arms. And then I can have one that looks more like the way he looked in the original 80s toy line. As we now jump into the final looks of the Eternian Palace Guard, I've got the figure displayed with mace in one hand, shield in the other, and glade holstered on the back of the figure's torso. The glade, that's the name of the weapon, was something that was easier slid on the side, on the strap, instead of actually trying to fight with an already loose peg in the middle. But with that holstered on the back, I guess you could also really slide the, the mace on the back of the figure's body. I guess for all intents and purposes, he has the means to store all three weapons. Nothing really has to go back in the box. The figure, though, speaking of the box, I think should have been a little bit wider to accommodate a second figure. Mattel, ultimately, I'm just going to go back anyways and get another one of these because I would love to have more than one. I've got actually three Horde Troopers right now for Hordak. I'd like to do something very similar with the Eternian Palace Guards. While they may not be protecting Eternia just now, they will certainly be protecting Castle Greyskull, and one is just not enough. If, again, if you want to get this set, the benefit of it is the fact that it comes also included with an unmasked version of Dun Duncan. Not an unmasked, an unmustached version of Duncan. If you want to have that displayed and have it look more like the original 80s toy, there's the benefit of that as well. But honestly, this is a set that's best, I think, should have been sold right away as a two-pack. Anybody, I can... I'm, all, I'm not speaking for everybody. I'm not speaking for everybody. But speaking for only the person behind the camera... This is a set, someone, anyone is going to be going back and buying another one, another one, an okay, it probably will only be stopping at three, but it's definitely something that I'm sure people are going to be army building to death out of. I mean, you should have just helped this along the way, Mattel, and just not release this as a two-pack. Do you feel like this is a set that should have been sold as a two-pack, are you glad that it was only sold on its own? I mean, unfortunately, though, the opposing argument would be, maybe somebody only just wants one of these figures, and I guess based on that, they wouldn't want to have to buy pay the extra cost involved to get a set of two when really one was just enough. Okay. Based on that, I'm still going to go buy, go back and buy another one of these. But I just, I, I think though that maybe an alternate head sculpt, can we, can we settle on an alternate head sculpt? Three head sculpts maybe could have also gone a long way. If you did get another one of these, you would have a different look to the Eternian guard instead of always having to have black hair. It's apparently a requirement on King Randor's. Everybody that works for his Eternian palace army has to all have black hair and black eyebrows. 
Have you had the chance to pick up the Eternian Palace Guard for yourself? Let me know down below in the comments section. And did you end up using that head and give it instead to Man at Arms and have the figure displayed more like his vintage unmustached version? Also as well, I mean, obviously we this is a precursor to the eventual review of the Snake Man Infiltrator, which basically is using the same body and the build and same armor as the one that we looked at in this review. So of course, stay tuned to this channel because we will be looking at the Snake Man Infiltrator in an upcoming video. The key to not making, well, the key to making sure you're not missing out on anything is first of all, if you enjoyed this video, I want to hit with a like. But if you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you would like to stick around for the review of the Snake Man Infiltrator, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell notification. Of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.